for this last example, um, I will not do um, a, C, a, a previous C implementation because that would be too tedious. I'm not I'm not that a good C programmer anyway. Uh, I will do it directly in SCADE and as an exercise, if you want, you can try to implement that in C and 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 see how clean your result is and how how much time it took you to come to that. Okay, so let's say each of my inputs, each cell represents a sensor. Yeah, of course, sensor is a keyword in our language. Okay, so I have just one input and one output. Okay, and I want to do something very simple. I want to say, okay, I will use the value from the sensor, I want to keep the value for, for the sensor only if my input remains within a given range. Okay, let's say if, uh, my, if my input is below 10, I shouldn't take it in account. And if it's above 100, I shouldn't take it in account either. Okay. So I can just use a limiter. I'm going to make two outputs, the, the, the value and the validity. So I can reuse I can check if it's in a given range. So let's say we said 10 and 100. So I can start like that and say, okay, if it's between both of them, it's valid. And if it's valid, my out value is in. Else it's, mm, let's say I want to take the mean between 10 and 100, so let's say 55. Okay, so far so good, pretty simple. I'm going to complexify that a little bit. I will want to say, basically, I can go out of range a little bit. Uh, so like, like this, when it's out of range, it's, it's not valid. But let's say that if the sensor stays out of range for more than a certain number of times, let's say 10 cycles or five cycles, the sensor should become invalid until my sensors come back in range for 10 cycles. So I can use a state machine with two states, fine, broken. So I will change, so valid is going to change. I will need a local variable that is going to be in range. So if I have five times not in range, oops, forgot the underscore. I'm taking this transition. And if I have 10 times in range, okay, uh, the times operator here is non-consecutive. Okay, so if it's out of range once, then comes back, then goes out of range a second time, uh, uh, this is counted uh, uh, as well. The, the counter is not reseated every time um, every time in range, uh, not in range is true, so in range is false. 
okay so here this is going to be false in that case and this is going to be just in range in that other case okay so if i'm fine i'm just using the value that is produced here okay so valid is true only when i'm in range but if I am five times not in range, I'm going into my broken state. And here, and we're going to test it to simulate it individually. And here, even if I'm in range, as long as I hadn't been 10 times, I keep, I stay in the broken state. Well, let's, t let's test this operator alone, right? So if in 66, okay, I'm here, so it's in range, so my out value is 66. And okay, as long as we remain here, no problem. Okay, if I have another value that is in range, like 55, no problem. Right. Now, let's get out of range let's put four valid is false i'm taking this value here no problem and i'm still in the fine state right so if in comes back immediately in range okay no problem i'm valid at once again no problem, and I'm keeping my output value. Now, I, I've already been out of range once. Let's go back out of range. Two, three, four, five, and I take this transition. Okay, so now valid is false. Okay, so validity should remain false as long as I have, haven't had 10 times in range. Okay, so I'm not in range here. Everything remains the same, no problem. If I'm back in range, the first thing we see is there's a problem in my implementation here. I should have used valid to select the output value. But you, we say that my valid remains false, and that's exactly what I wanted. Even if in is in range, I have to maintain it in range for 10 times, 10 cycles. So I did one already, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So I'm coming back here, and in range is true. Okay, so that's uh, uh, already half complex behavior. I just fix here. I don't want to use this. I want to select this based on the valid output. Okay. Looks good. So now let's come back on a root operator. And very simply, I can just say, okay, I just have 12 of the sensors. So I will have, as I do have two outputs on my sense operator, out value and valid, this one being an integer, this one being a Boolean. Here, I will get an array of 12 integers that holds all the out values and here, I'm going to get an array of 12 booleans that is holding the validities. I'm just going to declare it. My validity vector, and it's boot, bool hat 12.
Okay, I can just test this. So let's start by all values being in range. But the last one, for example. Okay, so you see that they are all in range, but the last one is not in range. So I'm using my 55. And here I have true for everyone, but for the last one. And we can go inside and look exactly what happens in which state is every sensor. Okay, for the moment they are all in the same state, they just have a different in value. Okay, so let's just run five cycles. So this sensor here, the last one, is going to be uh, uh, to become to be in the broken state. So if I open this one, you see that the transition has been fired here. This one is in a broken state. It doesn't change anything here for my outputs. Now let's say this one also goes out of range, but this one goes back in range. Okay, so you see that both are false because even if this one is in range, it's still in the broken state here. So it didn't went back and this one is in the fine state, but my value being out of range, uh, uh, my validity is false. So uh, here we keep a very simple behavior, but you already have some memories, state machines, etc. So the map iterator is also very powerful when you have n times something if you have n sensors or n engine controllers n being one uh, being two three four ten one hundred whatever okay it's it's really very powerful to manage replication in a very simple way and all the memory is managed for you right so i hope you had a good understanding of the benefits of the map iterator. Thanks for listening. Bye.